Okay, yeah, go ahead, please. So um, I came from a Facebook ad, and the what really caught my eye was the fact that it seemed like um, a genre that I haven't heard about in a long, long time. And that interested me because it, well, it felt like, you know, when you haven't seen something in a long time, uh, it really interests you. Nowadays, it's, uh, it seems like the focus, especially with the science fiction games, has shifted toward more uh, real-time activities. So, you know, real-time strategies on the order of, say, StarCraft or that kind of stuff. Um, it has also gone along uh, with uh, designing, especially ships. But this, this idea of focusing on the planets themselves, on the colony, on developing some, on growing something, that felt like it hasn't been exploited in a long time. And I got curious about that. Okay. I got curious about that. And that, to me, felt like the unique proposition of the game. Okay, so how did you, how'd you like the beginning? How'd you like coming in? Did the tutorial sort of, I mean, it sounds like you're obviously a very sophisticated gamer. Um, how did you, how do you like it so far? So, wait a second, because I, I did take a couple notes. So in, with, with the tutorial, that's like uh, at the more technical aspects, there were a couple of times where the tutorial kind of, uh, how to put like kind of dropped out, like the interface froze when I did stuff that perhaps wasn't coded correctly. At one point, especially when it was about looking through the colonies, there's an interface for that. So there's a button colonies, I press that with the tutorial. Yeah. And then um, I press some other button to like leave the interface and it wouldn't leave. Right, uh -huh. and then the entire interface froze. I had to reload, and then uh, it it's. I think it made me redo the entire tutorial. Okay. Yeah. So that's uh, a major technical issue. I think it's very important to look with uh, your developer. His name is Noah, I believe. Yeah. Uh, it's important to look at when you're designing the system. You know, like where where are the places where uh, you could possibly drop right out of the interface, out of the tutorial. Uh, that. In my experience making games, it usually happens when you have two uh, different um, input systems of sorts where you, like for instance, if you program something where you click, uh, like say you have a menu and you click outside of the menu and it automatically closes the menu, right? That's like one system of input. And say for instance, you also have the second system of input where it's a tutorial, it says press here, right? There's an arrow, it says press here. Sometimes the two are, are conflicting, right? Like if the tutorial system says press here, but I don't press here, I would click anywhere else to close down the menu. It could be accidental, it could be voluntary, but uh, in the end, the two systems end up in conflict and then one freezes and the other uh, keeps going. So you have to reload the entire system. I think that's very important. You have to look through all the input systems with uh, your, um, your developer. Okay. As, yeah, so I think that's very important. Um, at the level of the design of the game, I, I won't go deeply into the graphics. Uh, because of course, you know, the, that's, it's very prototype ish. Mm, I could not delve very far into the mechanics themselves, but, uh, you know, I think they're decent, but I, I, obviously with the management game, it's difficult to explore it very in depth within just one week, right? Especially when it's designed to be the sort of game where you kind of have to wait, right? It's kind of, um, you, you say, okay, I'm going to do this research and wait six hours, right? It's very difficult right. to do a test, right? I mean, perhaps during the test, if you're going to run another test, you might want to reduce the time of waiting, right? How, so how like, irritating is that? Uh, I mean, if it's for, how do I put that? In the actual release of the game, it's, it's I think the, the goal of the game is to just kind of have something to manage, right? Like a management game. Yeah. So it's not necessarily irritating by itself because it's expected. But um, when you you are a better a beta tester, right? You kind of want to experiment all the systems that you've implemented, right? So I couldn't see, for instance, go very far into the tech tree, right? Because I don't have the time for that, uh, and I could not experiment. You know, whatever mechanics you've implemented toward the end of the tech tree, I could not possibly experience that, and you would not be able to gather feedback. So uh, perhaps for uh, testing, you should uh, implement ways for the players to perhaps skip ahead uh, and, and be able to test the mechanics themselves. You know, uh, in programming, they kind of call that unit tests, right? Like you test each unit of the game design. Okay. Mm -hmm. So have you been, have you been playing? Like I find for me, it's a game that I have in the background. Like I do the yeah. move, um, and then I do something else on my work and then I go back. So it's a different type of game for me in general. And I kind of like that because I 
wake up in the morning and okay, what builds came in or like it's, it's, it obviously isn't your sort of present moment shooter game. It's more long-term strategy kind of thing. Right. Um, so, um, uh, I'm just sorry, English, the English is not my main language. Okay. Sorry, my English is not my main language. Um, I think I'm proficient, but uh, I kind of have to think before I speak. Um, uh, I don't think it's a kind of game that, you know, one would leave in the background. It's more like, uh, like running in the background. It's the kind of game that you would kind of interact with and then do something else. You will close it and then yeah. do something else and then perhaps come back whenever it pops up in your mind. Yeah. Uh, as of now, that's what it is. I think if you want to make it more engaging, you might need to implement um, some sort of element that that implements a trigger in the gamer's mind, right? Like, how do I put that? Um, daily rewards, for instance, right? Daily rewards, like that, that gets into people's minds, right? They think like, oh yeah, that's my daily reward, right? It, 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 they, con they get conditioned. Like every time they, they, uh, they come back home from work, they think, oh yeah, that's my daily reward. I got to connect, I got to connect, right? Without that, it's just more of uh, whatever, um, oh yeah, that thing exists. Maybe I should check up on it. Or maybe I'm not that interested anymore and I drop out of the game, right? So you need some sort of element to, um, so you need to kind of create a, tr a mental trigger for them to think right. about the game consistently because otherwise they're eventually gonna forget. Yeah. Um, so I think, of course, what it, whether somebody leaves that in the background or not, I think that's more of a lifestyle thing. It depends on how people grew up using computers. I'm I'm younger, so um, the way I grew up using computers is I don't like to leave things running in the background. Okay. Some other people might, you know, they're just the way they grew up and use computers. They they, they leave things running in the background. They open like a hundred tabs on Google Chrome or stuff. Perhaps you know, I'm sure there are people out there like that, but that's not me personally. Um, I think so. You, I think, and, and I think it's changing towards this trend, right? Younger people just don't want to leave what they call, you know, like kind of um, background processes running. Okay. How How old are you? Uh, I can. I would prefer to keep that. Uh, you know, <laughs> just secret. Okay. No. But 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 I've interacted with uh, with you know players of all, all ages, you know, from like age seven to like you know older people, and I, we run some guilds and stuff like that in you know, online games, and you know some people are obviously older, but so. I've gathered some experience of you know, gaming across all ages. Okay. I think, yeah. Uh, so what do you like? What, what do you like about the playing? Like, how many how many hours? Like, how much time did you put into the game? Let's say in the first week. Let me think. Well, I mean, right now it's only been six days since the beta started. I think I put in like a lot of uh, some time at the beginning uh, about one hour on the first day and then I just kind of checked it up perhaps five to ten minutes the, uh, during the other days. Um, in my view, of course, the, fir the, the first day was mostly to explore. I, I really wanted to explore, you know, the mechanics because it's a beta test. I thought that maybe there were tools that would allow me to kind of maybe skip ahead and do some stuff, right? Because the developers are, might be interested in receiving feedback uh, across all the mechanics that were implemented. Uh -huh. um, uh, I was kind of disappointed that it wasn't there, but I was still willing to give it a shot. Uh, another thing that kind of that kind of um, limited what I could do was that each tab could only be explored once they were unlocked, right? Yeah. So for instance, uh, the ships tab uh, was unlocked very quite late. And these, uh, by then, the interest has kind of waned. So I think, um, of, of course, it, it's a design choice, right? You don't want to overload people at first, but right. if you can't keep them long enough, they won't stick around to learn all your mechanics and be uh, like, uh, uh, what's the word, enchanted by what you create, right? Right. So you, you, in terms of presenting, I think there's that, you know, like, although you limit the possibility space, you know, what they can see, what they can't see, you know, at each stage of the game, at each stage of the tutorial, uh, you might want to think about more than like the timing, like, with what is unlocked when, right? If you think the ships are very interesting, you might want to present that earlier, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, what mm -hmm. about the resource allocation at the beginning, like the amount of resources that you had versus how you were spending them, that kind of ratio? The, re the resource, okay. Um, so the way it was presented, I don't know if it's just because of the interface, uh, right? It's a very um, prototype-ish interface, right? You could just put a, 
a picture and then two numbers. Yeah. Um, in more sophisticated uh, games, the interface would be very would be quite polished, right? Like, um, yeah. Uh, here's an example. Usually, the number of resources you currently have would be in a larger font than your yeah. um, your your resource over time, right? Yeah. So. It might, it might even be in bold characters, right? So that makes it very obvious what it is. But in your current implementation of the interface, you just have two numbers and I look at it and it's kind of small-ish. It's not obvious by itself. Yeah. I have to kind of hoover my mouse over it and look at it, which may seem like a natural thing to do, but people are very, um, they're very lazy. You know, they're very lazy. So, so the design needs to be polished in that sense. Yeah. As for the resource allocation, listen, I, I, I can't say that uh, I've explored, you know, the balance of the game. I, in fact, I could not even interact with another player in my own personal experience. Yeah. Um, so I can't say very much if it's balanced or not. Uh, whatever I wanted to do, if I wanted to make research or build something, I could do it. I always had the resources to do so. Um, of course, at that point, it's about what you want out of your game, right? If you want to create more conflict between players, you want to make resources scarcer so people have to fight over them. If you want to make it about growth, then you might want to turn it more into a somewhat uh, easier idle-ish game. Perhaps you've heard of things like cookie clickers or something like that, right? It's kind of like idle. You don't have to think very much about how you allocate your resources because you know that you're just going to become richer over time, right? Uh -huh. um, I'm not sure exactly where you want to drive uh the game toward personally i could uh, i felt somewhat indifferent indifferent to the, the the resources balance as for the names i mean i find it interesting how you took it directly from uh, the chemistry table mm, but i'm not sure that really uh, resonates with a lot of people right. unfortunately so perhaps you want to rethink that mm. i think that would be it for the resources themselves. Uh, another thing that was, you know, kind of somewhat linked are the planet statistics, right? The the um, each planet has somewhat like the statistic. They and I find it find it very interesting how you implemented all those tags for um for different species, right? It's like there's like arachnid, but it's also like maybe another like sub tag and you know you right. combined. I think that's very fascinating. It makes for a very great procedural universe. Unfortunately, it's just not clear from the get go what they mean for the game, right? Mm. At the very the, the one of the first screens that we interact with is the species selection screen. Right. I feel like it's a bit of an overload. It feels like there's no good choice really, but perhaps it's. I think it's may it might be due to two factors. The first one is the great variety of races, of species, and the second is the 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 paragraph of presentation. So what I gathered from each of them is that some have. Uh, better uh, versatility across different ecosystems, right? Some mm -hmm. are somewhat, some have different so 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 social structures, but the way it's presented, it's like one fat paragraph. It's one big wall of text. It's really unfriendly, right? And there are no icons whatsoever to represent anything. So perhaps you could attempt to make it first a bullet point, right? To make it consistent across all the descriptions. That makes it much less intimidating. And second, you might want to introduce small icons. One of the great games that I've played will be Civilization. Yeah. Yeah. And in Civilization, anytime you see the word, say, production or food, there's a small icon beside it. Right. Right. Plus one icon of food, food, word food, right? Right. So that the, the people cease to recognize uh, the, the mechanics and the resources by the word, but rather by the resource, by the color. And if you color code well, then it becomes very interesting, right? You just pass over like all the species and like, oh yeah, this one has a lot of green meaning food, right? This one has a lot of yellow meaning, say, uh, resource extraction minerals, for instance, right? Because yeah. if I have to read the word mineral, it's slower and it really exhausts the mind, especially if you have a large selection. Right, right, okay. Right, uh, so I was thinking about the planet statistics. Um, I think there was something a bit incongruent in the way things were presented because uh, the, the, the way the, 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 the resources are presented, I think they're usually in the hundreds, right? 
the numbers. They're usually in the hundreds. Yeah. But with the planets, we see some large, much bigger statistics, right? Like population, the millions, right? So I think that's kind of somewhat uh, incongruent, perhaps uh, just uh, find another way to present population. Right. right or those big numbers make it somewhat more congruent because otherwise it, it seems like people might get some wrong ideas and feel just generally confused right if i have 1 million population if i have like 10 million 100 million population how come i get like what's the unit for like yeah. metals what's the unit for like organics right right so, right no good point good point um what about like the the two numbers one is a multiplier and one's your total and part of the feedback i give i wanted to know like like somewhere to show what the multiplier, like it's per year, but that isn't shown anywhere. So I personally would simply scrap the idea of month, year, and conversion because people, uh, the way they use the game, they simply won't think it in terms of game years, right? They're going to think about it in terms of their own daily day, right? As I said, it's and as you said, it's the kind of thing you kind of want to run in the background and sometimes think about, right? Yeah. So you never think about in real life, whenever you think about the game, you're never thinking, oh, yeah, five game years just passed, right? You're thinking, oh, now it's 5 p.m. I might want to check out on the game. So if you make the multiplier more obvious, like more relevant to the players themselves, I think it's going to be easier. And it also sets a better trigger for them to think about your game. Right. How long have you been in, in game design or computers? Oh man, uh, since I started playing recess in elementary school, <laughs> like, you, know, you know, I was inventing game. I was like with a bunch of weird kids that didn't really fit either with the athletes nor the, the, the you know, the, 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 the story tells, you know, some people, they just stick together and are social, right? They talk to each other. We were like neither. So yeah. we kind of invented our own games. We would draw stuff uh, on the ground. Uh, with the those um, those uh, pastels, right? And that we we would uh, invent those games. And even I was kind of like the group leader. I came up with those ideas. Eventually, I moved into online, uh, yeah, you know, the online world, digital world, mm -hmm. and designed a few games here and there. Modded a, quite a little bit, created mods for existing games. Mm -hmm. I, and that's uh, that's how I fell in love with you know really like more like creating games rather than consuming. Uh, what do you are you currently working on any projects or? Uh, yes, but it's not advancing uh, quite fast because I'm about because I'm considering it more from a business perspective. So um, I'm starting to, to think of it more as a career than something I just do for fun, right? Right. Uh, I might want to outsource some some stuff, and I need to actually carefully think about the financial success of the game because it's much more difficult at like pretty much next level compared to what I've done until now. For sure. Yeah, I mean, when you're by yourself, or it's it's. You got to carefully choose your projects and uh... yeah yeah you know, well listen you know time is the only thing that we're all missing right uh, I used to have the this um this friend well I mean it's still my friend but he's just not working with me on video games and he moved on right he moved on he's not making video games anymore but you know both of us were we were kind of like the prodigies of <laughs> of our high school right he was he that man was super talented with uh, mathematics and uh, and programming he started we, we both started at a young age but i went more into design and he and business and he went more into programming right mm. uh now he's working into some like deep uh, artificial intelligence systems and stuff like that mm. Mm. yeah that's sort of where the a lot of focus on that right now well you know technology is technology it's all you know like it's not the end of everything yeah at the end, because the end user of technology are still human beings. That's why I kind of, you know, since the beginning uh, with you, I'm kind of hammering about thinking more about the player, right? Thinking about, you know, how they interact with your game. Uh, what's their day like, right? Oh, yeah, I finished work. I better look up at my game, right? Mm. You know, if you think more about that. So, you know, no matter your technology, no matter how, it, like, even if you can create extremely um, intricate systems, in the end, if it, you, you need to make people think about it. Yeah, the, the other project that we have is uh, a question. It's like an Oracle, an online Oracle. I've been working on a sort of holistic thinking system for like 25 years. <laughs> so I've got a lot of designs around certain things. And uh, Noah was the first person that, that could build one of the designs and, and we build just a simple kind of interface that asks a question and then three cards come up. It's like an online Oracle, like I said. Um, so that's the other project that we're working on. Mm, that's pretty fascinating. I'm sure, I'm sure with a nice interface, it can gather a lot of attention. 
Yeah, if you want to go to choose, I mean, we, the interface is, is still pretty simple. If you go to choosearemedy.com, mm -hmm. let's see, choosearemedy.com. Do you want to take a look now? Let me check. Oh, yeah, I think I see it. Yep. Write a question, pick a question, and divine some. Yes. So throw a question in. Type a question you seek an answer to. What is the meaning of life? Okay. It has been acting a little slow. Um, yeah, I think the interface is a bit slow due to the animations, but uh, that's <laughs> that's really uh, interesting. I, I got acceptance, in? acceptance, preparation, and research. <laughs> okay, acceptance, preparation, research. That's that's pretty good. That's uh, where uh, it's is. pretty spe that's, uh, wait. So, so, so you, you, you say that, that you would be working on this sort of holistic. Uh, I, I think per perhaps it uses some sort of uh, link. Um, what's the word? Um, a neuro linguistics uh, program. NLP. Well, um, well, the first, the first card set is about 100 values. The second card set is 72 conversation types. They're mostly business conversation types. And that's the real focus of, of at least what I've got. And then the third one is four levels of cards that create a bus uh, sort of universal business system. So you're always getting um, like there's choice, the inner you, flow is the outer you, synergy is the inner you, inner group, and then harmony is the outer group. So it, mm -hmm. those four levels are sort of always there. So anyway, th these cards, again, like it's like a divination. And I found over the years that when I, because I put them all in a card set physically, that people, like if you, I have the, they're, they're in a physical card set called the conscious communication card set. Can you see these? I'm not sure if you can see these, but. Um, uh, oh yes, I can see. So by putting it online in, in a sort of Oracle form, it's, it's just, you know, for the, there doesn't seem to be like a universal question answer thing online. And so that's what this mm -hmm. is aiming to be. And then to at some points, like press the button and start a conversation. We were working on these chat rooms where it would generate a chat room from that spell. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so the chat room would be actually framed because what I see with so many of these chat rooms or just chats, right? There's no context of the framing. Right. It's just the, 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 the program kind of re responds to the text, but without creating really the context, as you said. Yeah. I mean, it's just yeah, like, yeah, it's, it's like responding to stimuli. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and, and so what I've sort of invented are these, I mean, like a brainstorm is very different from a negotiation, right? Right. Uh, storytelling is very different from a presentation. So the chat room would be defined by the type of conversation that you have. And then the choice lens on the right is the focus point for the mind. And then the value is kind of like the intention that you're programming into the, the conversation. So mm -hmm. it's, and we got pretty far on that. We, we have it almost done. And then we, and it included this spell generator, but then we sort of, uh, something happened. I won't talk about, but then we, we, we didn't work on it for a while. And then when we came back to it, because there's a lot of other screens to build, you know, it doesn't matter mm -hmm. what you have, right? There, there's right. Like backup screens for your data. Yeah, uh, yeah. Flow. Uh -huh. so yeah, we, it's all the visible stuff, the backend, they call it in tech. Yeah, and I mean, it's, it's meant for facilitators. And I think most of the stuff that I have is like it's very unique because it's in circles, and so it's 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 quite a. I call the program in the inflow matrix operating system, and it's. Uh, I the reason I'm telling you is this is because we're sort of we're looking for some other IT people. We don't have funding, mm -hmm. but but I, I believe that it's it has great potential because I've got like 25 years of design behind it. But uh, mm -hmm. um, I don't know if it interests you at all. But I'm just sort of putting it forward as a. A possibility if you are we well, 25 years that's more than uh I, uh to give you a clue that's longer than i've lived so yeah, <laughs> yeah so um, I mean, it, it's but no but it's, cer it's certainly is impressive it certainly is impressive um and i think but i think the the ones who are most likely to be um interested with that would be uh you know business owners not necessarily uh, end consumers um nowadays on the internet it feels like uh the, you most of the end consumers the individuals it's too um 
it's too much based on this sort of popularity thing, right? If you can get popular, if you can uh, gather a lot of attention, uh, but uh, and it's not that much about utility anymore. You know, most people they're not that. You know, they say the new, the younger generation they, they they they're so good at technologies. That's not true. They just they were just born with it. They know how to react with the interfaces, but they don't necessarily know what's going on behind it. You understand? Okay. So I think what this could be very, very much because I think it can provide incredible utility, utility to um to various other forms of technologies, and really that's the the, the, the like as a if you see it as like a gear in the like the larger machine of society, you know, I think where it has the most value, where it provides most utility, is really to the other uh, business owners who have to like manage all this sort of interaction and popularity thing, and they they they, they can't just rely on humans to figure it out, right? It'd be nice if they have an oracle that can you know consistently get the contest right humans they kind of evolved out of you know we are our own education right we have like our own biases and all that stuff we don't necessarily understand all the things in the same way but if you have a machine it'd be very interesting well so you, perhaps that's what you could explore did you take a look at this yeah i mean I, and i agree with you like it's yeah yeah I, well i kind of see it it's it's somewhat oblique so it's not very um readable but yeah i see it I mean, this is, it's like nine the levels. The picture is of, oblique, but. Yeah, it's nine levels of time. So this is the main focus point for organizing the whole software system of uh, just cyclical time. So the outside is your lifetime. The blue is yearly. The lunar is uh, the aquamarine. Daily is green. Then you switch and it's seasonal. And then it's here, it's hours, minutes, the present moment and timelessness. And then here you have levels of consciousness in the center point. So it's putting together cycles of time and levels of consciousness, which doesn't really exist right now, especially in software. And so what I've sort of seen is software, you know, from a designer point of view, I use mental models to design the flow of information, right. which is, I think, a little bit different from how software is done because they're usually using the limits of the programming like like I'd never like the categories that they use to organize the info um, but that's just my own sort of mm -hmm. oh let's uh, uh, to be honest even the prof I've worked with some professionals they, they don't they're not good at it either it's it's a real the, the, how do I put that they start from an architecture point of view right they think architecture you know the structure right the, the iron beams right and then yeah. the walls and then what's inside the wall it's kind of like that the rooms right it's yeah. very architectural yeah um so yeah, that's that's one of the bigger problems in the with the tech companies because they can't seem to um to make their programmers understand what the product managers and the product designers want <laughs> right well that that but no this is fascinating i think like the interface right like the interface is the focus point and then everything else is making mm -hmm. the interface work so from a design point of view you know something like this is an interface like no programmer would come up with that right i mean it's 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 just mm -hmm. it's it's very unique in its design so anyway i just thought i'd uh, show you a bit of that because uh, uh this is fascinating i know we kind of went off on a tangent but you know might as well this is, this is incredible um you know uh, it's not something i've ever heard about and i really wish both of you uh, the best luck you know making that thing work and realizing it well, thank you. I'll send you my email. And if you do have some interest, um, we are starting to, you know, build a bit of a team because uh, Noah's going back to school and uh, we're looking to sort of find a, a bunch of coders that want to sort of jump into a potentially, you know, I think it could be the most sophisticated information system on the planet um, in time. But it's but it's unique. It's unique. So, um, anyway, is there anything else you want to say about the game? Um, stuff you like about it? Stuff that uh, caught your eye? Anything unique or innovative that you see? That you like? uh, as I said, uh, as I said, you know, like obviously it's a prototype, and the interface needs to be polished uh, a lot to make things more uh, intrinsic, right? As I said, for instance, some uh, the font should be considered, right? So, so the size of the the, the the some characters should be considered, boldface, italic, that should be considered. Um, but we won't go too much over that. I think uh, really the, un the 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 unique proposition of the game really is about uh, growth and management, 
yeah. growth and management of planets. Uh, nowadays, a lot of the focus, you know, because it's unique because nowadays the focus is shifting toward uh, spaceships, toward big wars, sh sh space shifts, and uh, less toward resource management. People want to see big booms, right? Yeah. Um, so I think you have, uh, you can capture a niche over there. Uh, what do I, uh, so what's something else I wanted to say? So I, yeah, I think that's your focus. And, and although it's your focus, you still have two paths you must decide on. Uh, either, right, it's the difficulty curve. How, how scarce are the resources? I've mentioned that, right? If you want more conflict, you need to have scarcer resources that people uh, fight over. Right. And, right? and uh, yet, if you just want something that's very, not quite mindless, but just very relaxed, yeah. right? you want to have, then perhaps, then you might want to have uh, more resources. You might want to have more resources without making it such as the resources seem too unlimited because that's what the, I got. Because if the resources seem unlimited, then people become apathetic to it. Yeah. No. Uh, that, yeah. So these are the two paths. Like it's basically this difficulty uh, um, uh, curve thing, and you kind of need to to touch on that. The tutorial has a, a lot of issues, but you need to test this, you know, technically, right? You, uh, just see, okay, does the interface drop here? Are our systems well integrated? Does it make sense that when people click here or there, uh, we get such an answer, right, from the from the software? Right. Otherwise, I think it's quite decent. You've got something. Um, you've got quite something, and I appreciate the amount of work you put into that. How long did it take you? It, it not me. I no. Well, one not you, but like both the both of you. I think he said about three thousand hours. Wow. Like he's, he's he's put a lot of time, a lot of thought, a lot of thought into it. Um, that's in, that's incredible. Are you, are you going to keep playing the game? Like, is that? Well, I mean, this is a beta test, so I will not be touching it until. Um, uh, personally, I won't be touching it until uh, there are, you know, further releases. I think okay. uh, what really got my eye was the first was I said, you know, I saw something quite unique and so a bit nostalgic that I haven't seen in about, I think, eight or ten years. Uh, you know, meanwhile, as I said, during those years, things have shifted toward more action packed toward the younger audiences. Um, and so that's, that's the first thing that got me. And the second one was the fact that it was a beta test. And I thought, yeah, maybe just, you know, take a look. Okay. Well, is you, what's your name? Uh, I would prefer to remain anonymous, but uh, uh, if I do contact you, I will uh, say uh, my name. Okay. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to come here. Um, it's very, uh, very nice to meet you. And we appreciate all the feedback that you give. I'll, I'll pass this on to Noah. We recorded it. So uh, that's fantastic. Well, best of luck to both of you. And I uh, wish you great success. Okay. Thank you very much for having me. All right.